You might have seen this video online, a beluga whale off the coast of Norway fetching a rugby ball being thrown by the crew of a boat. It's adorable, right? No, not if you know what's really going on. Here's marine biologist Isabella Clegg. I think the whale's behaving from this video looks like it's very used to humans. It's not scared, it doesn't show any kind of, sort of fleeing response from the boat or even from the ball being thrown. And it also knows to bring the ball back and hand it almost to the humans. Belugas are, they're clever, they're inquisitive. They might come up slowly and investigate it, maybe nudge it around with its nose first. They don't naturally immediately put things in their mouth. Certainly wouldn't pick it up and bring it back to the boat. The man on the boat is wearing a coat with the logo Dana Divers on it. That's a research group associated with the Save Our Seas Foundation. We contacted them, but they weren't able to tell us what exactly the man was doing with the whale. The whale appears to have been trained by human beings. He was spotted by fishermen in April, and they gave him a name, Khvaldimir. He was wearing a harness with the name of the Russian city St. Petersburg on it, suggesting he might have escaped from a Russian military program. All we know really about the Russian military program is that likely to exist, and that's from a few satellite photos of some covered domes in an area that's not so far from northern Norway where Havaldemir was found. They use them for reconnaissance missions, so they can put cameras on the animals and get them to swim around uncharted waters. If they're looking for mines, the animals can come back and tell them if there's an unidentified object. Similar to military dogs, you can train them to do a lot of different tasks. I think the belugas for the, for the Russian military are probably quite dispensable. You know, if, they, if one escapes and they can go and capture another one. I think they have got a very secretive and covert operation there, so maybe they don't want to give any confirmation or denial about whether they are using belugas or how they're using belugas. Dr. Clegg says it's unlikely Havaldemir will be able to survive on his own. It's not the first time a supposedly cute animal video actually hides a reality that is grim. Take a look at this rodent supposedly taking a shower. He's actually trying to get the soap off his fur. Or this loris being tickled. That is a defense posture they adopt when they're threatened. Havaldemir's problem is that he seems to be used to being fed by humans. That means he's dependent on humans for survival. The Norwegians who've been looking after him are gradually reducing the food they give him, hoping he'll start hunting himself. I think we have to think really, really carefully about how our behaviour and, and what the, the animals are thinking and taking away from it. Every single time they interact with us, they learn something. And I think it's, it's been unregulated for, for too long. The bottom line is that we just have to keep our distance, not interfering and, and interrupting their lives as, as much as possible.